Hey everyone, welcome back to our last day in 1 John. We're going to be reading through 1 John 5 today, and this concludes this overall message in the book of what is it to be a Christian? How do we live this out? How do we have confidence? How do we really know that we have a relationship? Um, and so, let's jump into chapter 5. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the Father also loves the one born of Him. This is how we know that we love God's children, when we love God and obey His commands. For this is what love for God is, to keep His commands. And His commands are not a burden, because everyone who has been born of God conquers the world. This is the victory that has conquered the world, our faith. Right? And so faith is not just this idea. Faith is active. Right? Faith involves all that we are. Right? If we truly have faith, then we live differently. Right? Um, and so we, we know that we have a relationship with God because of, of, our, of our profession of our faith, of the fact that we are agreeing that Jesus is the Messiah. He is God. Right? Um, and we don't just profess who Jesus is and our belief in who Jesus is, but it, it changes who we are and we live it out. And we love not just Jesus, but we love others. It's this constant theme we see going through 1 John of this faith in works and specifically in our works, our, our love of other people, specifically even our loving of other Christians, right? We, we should love everyone, but we should actively, with, strongly love other believers as well, right? Because they're God's children. It's like, you know, I think about for me as a father, um, my kids, right? When they are not loving towards one another, when they're hating on each other, that breaks my heart because they're both my kids, right? And so, you know, not only do I love this one, but I love this one. And so when this one hurts this one, this one's actually hurting me as well. And so it's that way with God that like, man, if these two actually have God's spirit inside of them, then they can't hate each other because they're hating also God that is in that person. Do you understand? So that, that's kind of what it's, it, it's teaching and, and revealing here. Um, let's continue. Who is the one who conquers the world, but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? Jesus Christ, he is the one who came by water and blood, not by water only, but by water and by blood. And the Spirit is the one who testifies, because the Spirit is the truth. For there are three that testify, the Spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three are in agreement. If we accept human testimony, God's testimony is greater, because it is God's testimony that he has given about his Son. The one who believes in the Son of God has this testimony within himself. The one who does not believe God has made him a liar, because he has not believed in the testimony God has given about his Son. And this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life. And this life is in his Son. The one who has the Son has life. The one who does not have the Son of God does not have life. There's only one way. There's not multiple ways to, to heaven. There's not multiple ways to the truth. There's one truth. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the light. I have written these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. If you're questioning, if you're ever questioning, like, how can I know that I'm saved? How can I know, you know, that I have a relationship with Jesus? Well, you can know based off of this truth of who Jesus is. You have to believe that believing he's the Christ, believing he's the Messiah, is also admitting that you require a Messiah. You require saving. You're part of the brokenness of the world. And so there's a humility in that, right? It's understanding I need to be saved. I can't fix myself. I'm not better than anyone else. I'm broken. I'm part of the problem. And Jesus is the answer. He's the only way. Right? And so you have this testimony that um, was revealed through history, right? With eyewitness accounts, right? And God himself spoke and revealed to, to people as well who had eyewitness testimony of that, that he is his son. And so we're not just this blind faith hoping 
there's there's testimony, there's evidence, right? And we saw that back in in First John. You know, that's where John starts with the fact that they're eyewitnesses of this evidence of who Jesus was. So we can have confidence in that. And then it continues. This is the confidence we have before him. If we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Going back into prayer, right? And not I can ask for anything I want. I'm asking for things according to his will, and he's hearing us. And if we know that he hears whatever we ask, we know that we have what we have asked for of him. If we're asking according to his will, it's, it's already done, right? God is, is going to bring about the things that he wants to bring about, right? He, he knows all things ahead of time. He's already planned how he's going to do things. And so we're just praying in agreement with him. It's, it's done. You can have confidence. God wins. His kingdom is going to be made here on earth as it is in heaven, right? And he's going to use me as well, right? He's going to use us, the church. If anyone sees a fellow believer committing a sin that doesn't lead to death, he should ask and God will give life to him. To those who commit sin that doesn't lead to death. There is a sin that leads to death. I'm not saying he should pray about that. All unrighteousness is sin, and there is sin that doesn't lead to death. What's he talking about here? He's talking about intercessory prayer, praying for another believer. I see a, a believer, someone who's professing um, faith in Jesus, right? And they're struggling in a sin. They've fallen into a sin. And so I'm going to pray for them on their behalf and say, man, Lord, help them be free of this sin that they're struggling with right now, right? Because I know that your spirit is in them. I know that you can do this, right? Because this is a believer, right? And so I would, I would pray for that person to stop sinning because they're a believer and I know that the Holy Spirit can help them to stop doing that. But then there's this other sin that leads to death. So this is a sin that doesn't lead to death, right? Because it's a sin of a person who already has life and you can't lose eternal life. But for the non-believer, any sin that they have is leading to death because the only sin that leads to death ultimately is rejecting the gospel, rejecting the Holy Spirit, right? And so if someone is a non-believer, I'm not going to pray that they stop sinning, right? Because then you're starting, that would be a works-based religion, right? Um, I would pray that they would receive the Holy Spirit. If they, you know, if I'm praying for them, I'm not praying, help Johnny to stop getting drunk every night. Help, you know, uh, Bob to stop beating his wife, right? No, I pray that they would be saved. And once they're saved, they will stop doing those things. Right? I don't pray for the behavior first before I pray before them receiving the Holy Spirit. If they were able to stop sinning without God, they wouldn't need God, right? But so our understanding is that, man, people sin because of their relationship, right? Because they don't know God, they can't help themselves but to live the certain way, right? So my prayer is for them to receive God. God would change their hearts once they've received. God and have a relationship with God, I can pray intercessory for them. I can pray that they would stop doing certain sins, right? Because then I know that God can do that through them, right? I know that they can stop sinning because they would have the Holy Spirit in them to help them stop sinning. And finally, we know that everyone who has been born of God does not sin, but the one who is born of God keeps him, and the evil one does not touch him. We know that we are of God in the world, the whole world is under the sway of the evil one. And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding so that we may know the true one. We are in the true one. That is, in his Son, Jesus Christ. He is the true God and eternal life. Little children, guard yourselves from idols. So he goes through all this, again, giving us this, this evidence of our relationship with God, this, this confidence that we can have in relationship, we can know all these things in First John. We can know that we have a relationship with God. We can know that we can, we can pray and our prayers can be effective, right? Ultimately, because of this relationship we have. And we can even know that we have this relationship based off of these things, right? And then in the end, he ends with, now guard yourself from idols, right? So it's cool that he does all the work of saying, you can, you can be assured of this relationship, you can live a certain way and know you can do that because of what God has given you, his Holy Spirit. And then he also says, now get to work and, and not doing these things. Get to work. Guard yourselves from idols. Don't stray. You know that you can do it. Now persevere, knowing you have this confidence, knowing you can. It's not up to you. 
but you're also involved. You need to be obedient. So thanks for joining me for First John. Uh, I pray that this has been helpful, um, and I would just encourage you to keep reading Scripture daily. Jump into God's Word. Pray first. God, help me to learn something from, from your Word today. Um, help me to know you better so that I would love you better. Um, and then just, Lord, you know, convict me and, and guide me and, and enable me to share this Word with others. So thanks for joining me. Have a great day.